I have a serious fascination with file managers, and you know this if you've watched my channel for any amount of time. I've made a ton of videos about file managers. More than one of them has been about Crusader, and I have at least two more of those planned. I have a problem. I like file managers an abnormal amount. I don't know why. I can't really even explain it to myself, let alone anybody else, but I like file managers. So, every once in a while, I get the hankering to try something new. Now, ViFM has been around for a very long time, so it's not exactly new, but I've never actually used it before. So, I thought it was about time. So, today, we're going to be taking a look at ViFM, V-I-F-M, and as the name suggests, it has a very Vim-like or Vi-like structure that allows you to navigate through it using the, I'm going to call them the Vim key bindings, even though we know it came before that, but you understand the purpose, right? The idea here is that you can navigate in the file manager using the Vim key bindings or in this, you know, the Vi key bindings, whatever you want to say. And it's very simple file manager, but it's deceptively simple. And I'll talk about that as we go through. So let me actually show you what VIFM looks like right now. So this is VIFM, and as you can see, it's not like basically any other terminal file manager outside of Midnight Commander. So there aren't very many dual-pane terminal file managers out there. Most of them are single-pane, and usually for good reason, because dual-pane file managers are really specifically good for dragging and dropping between the two panes, right? That's usually why two-pane is useful, but, or at least that's what I always thought, right? When I first saw that this was dual pane, I was like, what's the purpose here? What what benefit could you possibly have? Because dragging and dropping is not something that you can do in a terminal, at least not easily. I mean, there are tools that you can do so, but they're finicky at best. So what's the purpose of a dual pane file manager in the terminal when you can't drag and drop? Well, just because you can't drag and drop doesn't mean you can't copy and paste. So that's where my misconception was because it's very easy to have two different directories open. So let's just say we have my pictures directory open here. We'll go to my wallpapers and other walls and this one here. And then if I want to go to the other pane, I hit tab and navigate to say my downloads folder. And I could copy things from one place to another. So all I have to do is say, go down here to, oops, go back here. Let's just say I wanted, wanted to take this one here. I could do DD and it would ask me if I wanted to delete. I'm just technically deleting it. You could yank it if you wanted to leave it there. And yank would be the equivalent of copy instead of cutting. So then I go back to the other pane, hit P, and now that thing that I cut is now in the other directory. And the idea here is that you can have two directories open at the same time and move files between them just like you would if you were to drag and drop in a, say, a terminal file manager like, you know, Crusader, which I have right here, like so, and I could drag something from here over here, and that's the way you would do it in a, um, a GUI file manager. So that's ViFM, what it looks like. So let's talk a little bit about navigation. So when it comes to navigation, if you've learned the Vim key bindings, you've learned the ViFM key bindings for the most part. So up and down is J and K, and then if you were to wanted to go into, say, this particular directory, you'd hit L, that'd take you in, H would take you back out. So th basically that's left and right, in is left, out is right, and you get the idea. If you want to go to the top, GG goes to the top, capital G goes to the bottom. And those are the basic Vim key bindings that you've probably used if you've ever used Vim before. You can also do many things just like you would in the command line. So you can do colon, which is entering command mode, and do basically anything you want to do there. So you can execute commands, you can open files, do basically anything you could do inside of Vim, inside of the command, or inside of ViFM, and it just works. So the basic idea here is that it's as Vim-like or Vi-like as possible. And that's good if you've, you're a big Vim user because you don't have to learn a ton of new key bindings. So let me show you some of the other key bindings that are here. So this is the man page for ViFM, and the basic movements, as you can see, are just the Vim movements. So uh, K, J, H, and L are for moving, as I showed you, G, G, and G. G, H is to go up 
one directory regardless of the view. GL or, or enter will enter a directory or launch the file. Uh, capital H will move to the first file in the window. So if I go over here and hit capital H, it'll actually go to the top there. Capital M will go to the file in the middle of the window. So they'll go to the middle file. Now, one thing that I'm not quite sure how it works or why it works this way is the space bar. So if you see here, it says space is used to switch between file lists. So as I showed you earlier, tab is actually what does that. If I can make sure the right thing is, is on focus, tab moves between these. But when you use space, space leaves this little odd notation here. And I'm not sure what that actually does because it's not actually something that it says. Basically, what it says here is just that it moves between file lists. It's not yanking it as far as I'm aware because the register is empty. So I'm not sure what the notation there is. I'm thinking it's just that it's noting where the cursor was when you switched. Because it looks like it does the same thing with tabs. So when you... Yeah, that's exactly what it's doing now that I see it. The, it's showing you just where the cursor was when you left that particular pane. That makes sense. The reason why that was confusing is because in like Ranger, if I show you Ranger here, of course I don't have Ranger installed. If you see can see Ranger here, if I were to hit the space bar, that's actually going to select those things. And in certain places where you don't have a theme for it, it'll actually leave an asterisk next to it. So that's how why I was confused because sometimes the asterisk means that it's selected in a lot of file managers the asterisk means selected that's the reason why I got confused to that but uh, really all the space and space and tab here are exactly the same thing so just like with them you can actually move down certain percentage counts or regular counts so if I wanted to go down 10 lines I could do 10 J and then move down 10 files or if I wanted to do go up I could go 10 K and that go up 10 files you can do the same thing with percentage, or you can use the G and GG ones with a count to go up or to center the list position at the count. You can also redraw the panes using ZT, ZZ, and ZB. Now, so basically what you're looking at here is a split. So if you've ever used Vim before, you'll know that Vim has a great way of splitting files or splitting the pane so that you can view multiple documents side by side. That's basically what this is. And just like in Vim, you can manipulate these splits in any way you want. So for example, you can do Control W, Capital J, and it will move the splits so they're on top and bottom. And if you wanted to go back, you could do Control W, L, and it would move them back side by side. Um, and that's capital H and capital J, not small. The... Control W, H, and J in the small sense just moves the cursor back and forth, which is the similar is similar to what you'd see with the spacebar and the tab key. So if you want to manipulate these so that even that they're, if they're different sizes, you can do so just like that. So like I said, there are many different ways you can manipulate the splits or the different panes. And that means you can basically make your VFM look however you want. If you prefer the panes to be top and bottom, you can do so. So if you wanted to say, for example, have the panes to be a different size, you could do Control W and then plus and Control W plus again, 10 plus will actually move it 10 spots over. So just like you can move down 10 lines, if you wanted to move your pane over 10 spots, you could do Control W 10 and then plus and then if you wanted to move that back you could do control w 10 and then minus and that made it look really really weird but we'll try again to save that control w and then 10 plus there we go and we'll do it again control w 10 plus and that kind of gets us back to where we started so as you can see the key bindings are a little wonky but then again them key bindings can be a little wonky. That's one of the reasons why manipulating splits is one of the things that I change in all of my Vim RC files so that they're a little bit more sane. You don't have to deal with the kind of funky key chords that they have by default. So those are the basic key bindings. There are tons more, obviously, that you can navigate through if you look at the man page, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but they are all well documented so you can peruse through them as you learn. And it's just a very easy. And obviously, if you know Vim key bindings, if you know Vim movements, all of that stuff is here and it works really well. And obviously, if you get to a point where you have 
started a key binding and it, you know, you don't know the second part of it, it let's just say you hit Q, it'll actually show you all the stuff that can come next. So that means that if you, it's kind of like a helper tool. So if you need to, if you've forgotten a key binding, it will help you as long as you remembered a certain portion of the key bindings. So that's really nice. And you can get rid of that by hitting escape. So those are the key bindings and the movements. And like I said, if you've learned Vim at all, you'll be very comfortable here. But what happens if you want to configure VFM? Well, you can obviously do that really easy by going to the VFMRC. Now, this is created the first time you open VFM by default. So you don't have to worry about creating it yourself or moving it from some root directory. It's here created by default. And it has all of the same defaults. And if you've ever configured Vim before, you pretty much know everything you need to know about how to navigate through this file. So you can create functions and things like that. Just like you can see here, you can use if statements if you want. You can set particular variables just using the set command. You can use the let command, the, the let built in as well uh, inside of if statements and, and variables. You can set the trash directory and you can set the history if you want. So there are a, a ton of different things that you can do inside of the configuration file. And I could spend a good hour going through this. There's 538 lines or so in the default configuration file. But basically, if you've ever configured Vim before, you will know that a lot of stuff here. So you can see where it sets certain key bindings. And obviously, because this is a configuration file, as long as you know what you're doing, you can build your own key binding set and do certain things inside of your file manager that you wouldn't be able to do by default. So say, for example, if you wanted to have a key binding to CD into a certain directory, you could do that. If you wanted to set a key binding to automatically copy a certain amount of files to the register, you could do that. The sky is really the limit as long as you know Vim script and it's all here and is well documented as well. So as long as you basically know what you're doing inside of Vim, you know what you're doing inside of VimRC. I will also link to a video by the Linux Dabbler. He has a video that goes in depth over his VFMRC file. And that video is awesome. It's like 40 minutes long. And he, he just talks a whole bunch about what he has in his file. And that will help you understand the infinite possibilities when it comes to configuration of VFM. I apologize. I'm losing my voice, which is fa just utter fantastic. Anyways, I will link to that video in the video description below because that video is awesome. You should definitely give the Linux Dabbler a subscribe because all of his videos are great. Okay, so... That's the configuration file. Like I said, I could go through more of this stuff, but if you've ever seen the VimRC file, this is basically the same thing just for a file manager. It has several if if then statements or if if else statements. It has a whole bunch of key bindings here to show you the way it's done and by default. So they have bindings here for faster remapping or renaming, I should say. They have bindings here for for executing files in GVim, if you use GVim, a lot of this stuff could be taken out if you wanted to, if you don't use GVim as well. So you can make this file simpler if you wanted to. You can also use a key binding here to start a shell, uh, to get into the shell command prompt if you wanted to. So there's a ton of stuff in here by default. And because they have some key bindings in here, you can use this as a, like a template for creating your own key bindings as well. So that's the configuration file. Now, there are two other things that I want to talk about. So the first one is image preview. VFM does have image preview. I cannot get it to work inside of Tilex here. But apparently if you use Kitty, you can get it to work using iCat, I think is what it was called. I have a, a document here or a, a blog post here telling you how to do it. I will link to this in the video description as well. It did not work for me because, because I don't use Kitty. So I don't know how well or good it is, but apparently it can be done. In addition, there is apparently ways of adding icons to VFM. I didn't do a lot of research into how to do this because I just actually just thought about it just now, but apparently it can be done. There is a plugin or something that I found here that will apparently do it for you. I'm not sure again how well it is because it looks well. Maybe it's not abandoned. It was just updated six months ago so maybe that will work but there are also other ways of doing it so if you want to do that i will also link to these in the video description as well so just because it's based on vim doesn't mean that it's not as fully featured as you'd expect in fact i'd say it's more fully featured that as any other terminal file manager maybe even more so so because of the dual pane nature you have more flexibility over what things 
or how things look and how things function. And it gives you the ability to see where you're taking files from one place to another instead of having to actually move out of the directory to copy and paste things like you would with Ranger or whatever. So I really like ViFM. The, the thing is, is that I'm very much a Ranger user. Like I said at the beginning, I've used Ranger for three or four years now. It's been my full-time file manager. I've tried many other ones, but I've always come back to Ranger because it's the one that I'm most comfortable with. But I do think that I'm going to spend some time with ViFM, customize it to the point where it, you know, it looks nice and follows my themes and stuff like that. And then see if it will actually be able to replace Ranger for me. Because like I said, I showed you before, I didn't even have Ranger installed yet. I just hopped to, you know, Fedora again. Or, re, you know, reinstall Fedora, I should say. And I hadn't even installed Ranger yet. So um, I think ViFM is, is worthwhile to give a try. if Especially if you are a Vim user. And I am a Vim user. I are one, as they say. So I'm going to give it a good go and see how well it works. And I think that because it's so customizable... I think I'll I'll be happy with it in the end. So that is ViFM. If you have thoughts on on it, you can leave it in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Links for LiberaPay and YouTube will be in the video description. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very much very much for your support we did go over 25,000 subscribers i didn't mention that on a video so thanks to everybody who, subs who has subscribed to the channel if you haven't done so yet hit that red button that says subscribe i promise you probably won't regret it maybe i don't know but hit the subscribe button anyways i do appreciate it thanks to everybody for watching i'll see you next time